I'm taking you to the gym with my training partner, Gus. Now, Gus and I are both part of the Strong Fit Mentorship Program. And we've been learning so many cool things that we obviously want to immediately implement. So you're going to see everything from interesting breathing techniques to peck sticks. But I think the best thing about this blog is watching the differences between men and women. Now, women are very process oriented. I mean, I'm the kind of person who likes to follow a system to a T. I track my progress in my book and I don't deviate from the map or the plan for the day. I've never had a male training partner before. I mean, I'm a fitness model, so I always train with other bikini models. I recommend training with the opposite gender. You definitely get the best of both worlds. And I'm more interested now in lifting heavier and going as fast as possible and not being afraid of deviating from the plan. Now, it took a little bit of getting used to it first. It was like, oh, oh, what? <laughs> I don't think Gus will ever count his reps though, but I mean, that's why he's got me there because I count them for him, so. And he's inhaling, exhaling, inhaling. There goes the external oblique. So you've reversed your breathing on this one. Do you like it more that way? All right guys, since we seem to be struggling with the external oblique opener, we're gonna go over breathing and activation a little bit. So what Sarah's gonna do first is a way where she breathes in to her belly and you'll see her six back engage but you won't see the plate move up so much. So I'm gonna do it such that I exhale. Embrace. Embrace. It's actually not terrible. But I can feel this yeah. on. This is totally on. So if you watch the order of operations there, you watch. see her six pack engage first, and then as a result, she's driving the plate up, right? What we want to do is be able to keep her six pack relaxed the entire time. So she's gonna breathe in through her nose, under the plate, the plate's gonna rise right away, right? Her six pack is a lot more relaxed. Well, it's theory. It's way better than it was. Okay. So there's a lot less pressure on her six pack there, right? She's screwing in, she's pushing her obliques out. Do you feel your obliques more that way? Yeah. Right, so it's allowing us to isolate the muscles we want to a lot better and increasing awareness by inhaling as we go through the concentric portion. I want you to try it and just see what you like more. Yeah. So this is like doing the pec squeeze carry with the medicine ball, except there's no medicine ball and he's not walking. He's inhaling through the mouth, exhaling through the mouth. Notice the inhalation happens on the concentric. This is increasing action in this limb. Now we're doing the weaker limb, doing nose breathing on the concentric inhalation to increase awareness. So inhale through the nose, exhale through pursed lips. And I'm curious to see if he can now do more reps on the left side compared to his right side. And what was your outcome? Did you forget to count? Yeah. Gus and I are both stronger with the right limb. Now, he prefers to actually start the sets with the left limb. He gets a better result that way. I, however, get better results when I start with my stronger right limb. Then I can end up pumping out more reps on the left side. So you have to experiment and do what works for you. This arm's dying. I can't keep this arm out. Just, just hold on to the seat. Yeah. Throw it down a little. You can see how he's actually holding the pec, the sternocostal fibers, to make sure he's keeping it engaged throughout the entire range of motion. That's a good cue you can try. So since we did IT for the pecs, the sternocostal fibers, now Gus was doing ET for the what head? Clavicular head. And we're doing bilateral because it's ET. How many reps did you do? I ended up doing four sets to failure for the unilateral internal torque exercises.
I'm also inhaling through the nose on the concentric for the left arm. Internal torque, one arm at a time. You can see Gus is palpating his pec to make sure he's keeping it engaged, that he's not shrugging up. For the external torque, I did about four sets, and I did about five to seven heavy reps. That's 180 pounds. Because he's a boy, he has no structure, and he does random things, which is why he has structure. Gus's masculine energy is rubbing off on me, so instead of just doing rows for ET, I also did lat pull downs. Ooh, did it. Why remove one plate at a time when you can do all three at the same ones? That's 180 pounds. I start with my stronger leg because that's my jam. And I do nose inhalation on the concentric for the left, mouth inhalation for the concentric on the right. I don't know, nobody gave me the goblet squat memo. I mean, every time I turn around, he's doing something different. Your right toes in a little. See how that right foot turns? That way? Yeah. Because the glute needs it's weaker, so it's trying to get a better purchase, right? Yeah, but then that's putting all that force on the knee, right? Because now your femur and your tibia are doing different things. So it was kind of like this. Yeah, exactly like that. But look at all the sheer force in there. Like your knees, your knees should be in line with your ankles. It's a little wider. So knees in line with ankles and wider foot placement. Look at how wide his feet are. Look, sometimes you gotta tell me something 16 times before I'll remember, you know? Right. Actually, if somebody tells you something and you're inhaling through your nose at the time, you're more likely to remember what they said. Also, look, Gus is totally rubbing off on me. I'm just doing random things now, randomly, because why not? Actually, um, you can see the mobility in the right inner hamstring has definitely improved. I'm getting stronger there. Single leg, leg press, internal torque, left leg, inhaling through the nose on the concentric. I'm gonna do it with the right leg and I will inhale through my mouth on the concentric. Oh my god, look at how much better the right leg is. Look at that. Better control, better depth. Yes! You can see I haven't yet been told 16 times, so I'm not remembering to have a wider foot stance, so yeah. And ET is activating the sympathetic nervous system. It's all mouth breathing, and today I felt like inhaling on the concentric. So IT unilateral, trying to stay in a posterior pelvic tilt, which is hard on this machine because it throws you into an anterior pelvic tilt. It encourages you to go into ET. There's E.T. For 40 years, I've had the world's biggest anterior pelvic tilt. So getting into a posterior pelvic tilt is like trying to put my elbows into my ears. Yeah, because I'm going like... Um... Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Huh? Whoa, did you change the settings? Really tall. Okay. Holy... Huh? No, 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 no. <laughs> Don't go in E.T. This machine was throwing us into anterior pelvic tilts, so we decided to go with it and just focus on maintaining tension in the inner hamstring and glute max, and we got a good burn. Right through your big toe. Okay. Glute max. Okay, good. Yours is heavier, too. Yeah, I know. I can't bend it. Yes, you can. No, I can't. Gus and I got pec sticks, and his is impossible to bend. You remember the sticks from the infomercials in the 1980s? So I started with an easier bendy rod, and the whole idea is that by activating my pecs, it's helping me improve my movement. The goal here is to create the right state. 
by creating the right state, then the correct action will follow. So right now I'm focused on my breathing and creating the right torque. And this pec stick thingy is helping me activate my pecs and my entire internal torque chain. Here are some examples of exercises I've been working on. So I'm bending the stick using the pecs. I am not using my upper trap, so there's no shrugging up at all. And you can see how every time I bend the butt, it activates my pecs or my chest muscles. And I can even turn this into a pseudo overhead yoke carry. So this is helping me find the correct overhead position. Internal torque. Good until about 45 degrees and then you go spot. Hinging is something I really struggle with because I have a massive anterior pelvic tilt. So Gus is demonstrating how to correctly hinge. And this is a swivel happening at the hips. He's using the internal torque chain. And you can see we're using the pec stick to facilitate this. So pretend I've taken this stick and stabbed it all the way through his body. So you can see how he's pivoting around the axis of the stick. So now he's demonstrating how not to do it, which is how I do it. <laughs> well, he's exaggerating, but he's using the lumbar spine to extend back up. What we want to use are the external obliques, the inner hamstrings, the glute max. That's a pure hinge right there. So now we are doing the external oblique openers. He's using the pec stick, I'm using a plate, but if we really want to take this to the next level, we're going to use both items. So he's inhaling through his nose with the left side, he's inhaling through his mouth with the right side. For IT, I did four sets of everything to failure. Women need more volume than men. Because he's a boy, he's like a fart in a mitt trying to find a hole in the thumb to get out, and he does like 16 different machines in the middle of our supersets. So I've learned that I need to move faster and like I mean it. For the right arm, I'm breathing through the right nostril. For the left arm, I breathe through the left nostril. This gives me such a high, it really forces me to use diaphragmatic breathing and engage my external obliques. Can't keep up with him. He's always running everywhere else to do 16 other things at the same once. He's palpating his pec to make sure it's engaged the whole time. I realize we look pretty weird, the stuff we do. External torque, which is bilateral, activating the sympathetic nervous system. We're checking to see if he's shrugging. A little bit on the right. Now I mentioned women need more volume than men. So after I left the gym, I came home and I wanted to work on my hinge. So here I'm working on dimmel deadlifts and sandbag overhead pressing. So this is internal torque. So I'm really concentrating on squeezing the bag to engage my pecs. I'm not arching the low back, so I'm using my external obliques. Then I work on handstands and I really need to work on tucking my tail. I have such an anterior pelvic tilt, so that's been obviously the challenge I'm trying to overcome and it takes time to fix something that you know has been a certain way for 40 years and I find that the sandbag carries are really helpful I'm trying to concentrate again on posterior pelvic tilt
thanks for tuning into this vlog. If this stuff is really interesting to you, then I recommend you check out my Strength Academy. I think it's up there, but it could be. I, I, I wanted to create the Strength Academy because once upon a time I was way too intimidated and insecure and overwhelmed to walk into a CrossFit gym to do all of this strong fit stuff. So I needed to learn in a very safe place, the comfort of my own home. And that's what I wanted the Strength Academy to be. Somewhere where you'll feel very safe, where you can train in the privacy of your own home, but get help from me and Coach Gus. So. I know it's intimidating to embark on a whole new thing. It's like learning a whole new language and it can be discouraging at first. And you know, if you think for a single minute that I don't struggle, you are dead wrong. It's really just a case of, you know, you try something and you get value out of that. You forget about the things that didn't go right. You focus on your daily win and you just keep going at this, piecing the days together. And gradually over time, magical things start happening. Of all the people who've joined my Strength Academy thus far, and thank you for joining, I am most excited and grateful. No one, no one is as broken as I was. I had so many problems, so many imbalances. I mean, I still can't believe I can do half the things that I can do today. But that's really just boiling down to my commitment to the daily process and focusing on a daily win. If I've said it once, I've said it a million times. Strength isn't about what you can do right now. So you don't have to be strong right now in order to do this. The whole point is that strength comes from overcoming what you thought you couldn't do. And if I can do that, then you can do it too. And heck, I'm still doing it. I've still got a long road ahead of me. So anyway, food for thought. Now it's time for the outro and if you are already subscribed, then you know that I'm so good at doing outros. Um, and if you're not subscribed, then, you know, I would really recommend you subscribe so that you never miss another outro. So, um, 